Hey guys, welcome to Manifesting Better. I'm back with another video and another topic that needs to be addressed. I also have an Instagram account. The link for that is in the description box below. Coaching is also available. The link for that too is in the description box below. Hey guys, hope you're well. So in this video, we are back again here with another manifestation Q&A. So I used to do like I have been doing uh, Q&A sessions on my page uh, on Instagram for the past three years every Saturday. But uh, for the past two, three weeks, what happened is I got some glitch there because of which I was unable to answer these questions. And because I was unable to answer these questions, I made two Q&A sessions here and I got a lot of comments from people. I, I got DMs and I got personal messages from clients and people saying that they would prefer if I keep doing the Q&As here. Although I wouldn't be able to make a regular weekly Q&As here. So what I thought I would be making at least every alternative weeks or once in three weeks, a Q&A session here. If you feel that you would want to leave your questions and you would want your questions to get answered every Saturday, I take these questions from there on my Instagram channel. So I put up a Q&A box. You can follow me there and you can put the questions there. So let's just directly get into the Q&A sessions. So the first question is, hey Karan, how to join your class? So I have one-on-one -on -one coaching plus I have a self-concept course. You can either DM me about the prices and packages. At this moment, I only answer package inquiries and coaching inquiries because I get a lot of DM, DMs and I'm unable to answer all these questions. So you can DM me there or you can reach out to me on my website or through my email uh, ID. Everything is linked in, the, linked in the description box below. So you can check it out from there. I have sessions ranging from one hour sessions to three month and even longer sessions. Next question. Can I manifest my SP after a fight that led to unfollowing each other on Instagram? To this, I would like to ask you before Instagram was available, before this concept of following and following was available for someone who, you know, in, in, the, in the previous generation, maybe, for example, my parents, if they were wanting to date someone, do you think they would be worried about someone following them or not? Do you think that would actually be a worry for them? The answer is no, because it does not matter. The girl that I'm dating now, when we first started, we did not follow each other on Instagram for the first two, three dates at all. After even after that, to a certain degree, not on every platform, because it does not really matter. Just because you follow someone on Instagram doesn't mean that you have a great connection with them. And just because you don't, it does not mean that you don't. These are all uh, things that provide you a false sense of security that, oh, this person is a part of my life just because they follow me does not really matter and does not really exist. Next question, how to detach ourselves while manifesting our specific person? So detachment is a topic when, uh, and I know I have been promising you guys that I will be making a video on this and I'm, I promise it's coming soon. But detachment is a byproduct of working on yourself. So think about it. The more you work on yourself, the less attached you become with that thing, the less attached you become with your specific person. So there are a few reasons why we are attached with that person. First, there are memories. Second, uh, there is a false sense of security that we have with that attachment. A part of us thinks that if we keep thinking about that person regularly, that means we are connected. It can be that I'm trying to fulfill some emotional need from that person. That person can be a sense of security for me. That person can be a sense of some particular feeling in my life that I'm not getting from anywhere else. And a combination of all these things is what makes me attached to something. The more I work on myself, the more I will get detached. A good question to ask yourself in this situation should be, what makes me so attached to this person in the first place? Because there is where you will realize that the attachment that you have from this person at this current moment is actually just a representation of something inside of you. It's understandable that you're attached because I have been attached too. But your goal should be detachment. Instead of making your goal, how can I manifest the person? Make your goal, how can I be detached from that person? Because that goal will help you manifest faster rather than just focusing on the person as a whole. So that's how you become detached. It becomes a byproduct of you working on yourself. And the more you keep doing that, the more detached you get. The next question, can we affirm saying that I know I'm uh, getting married to him because I cannot live in the end? I know a lot of people because of, of many other, like many coaches have talked about this. Many teachers have talked about this, that you need to be in the state of having. But when we consider the state of having, we usually consider it from the state of words that I have it, right? A lot of times saying the word I have it can actually make you feel more triggered and can actually make you feel more distant from what you're manifesting. You can definitely say, I know I will get it. What matters is when you say these words, which one is making you feel more confident? So for example, let's say I'm someone who is living on the streets right now. 
and I want to be a multi-millionaire and I'm affirming for that and when I'm saying I am a multi-millionaire it's only making me more triggered because I don't have money to buy food for me saying that I will become a multi-millionaire will make me feel more confident for example, I start affirming that I have 1 million subscribers on YouTube. It would make me feel more away from it if I keep saying I have it because when I will see it, it might trigger me. For me, in some situations, I definitely go with I will get it and I know I will get it because the feeling of power that I generate from that is what helps me manifest. Just like everyone else, the feeling of confidence and the knowing that people say that the knowing that I, that I knew that I will get it, I knew that I have it. It does not matter which words you use. What matters is what feeling is it bringing out? What state of being is it bringing out? And whatever state of being is it, it is bringing out, that is what will matter more. So definitely you can go with I uh, have it and I or I will get it, whichever one suits you. How to get rid of a prolonged 3P situation? So this is a question I won't be able to answer here in detail because honestly, I don't know what your situation exactly is, but it would be... Uh, like uh, it, this is something I can only cover in a session because if I answer this here and you might be in a dif different situation I won't be able to do justice to this question but usually when people are saying this question that how to get rid of a prolonged 3p situation there are one of two scenarios if yours is not one of them you can move on to the next question but usually the first scenario is that you are with someone who is giving attention to someone else two or it's a situation where you are not with them but it's like three people are there if I was in that situation and I would want to be a part of a monogamous relationship with that person, that would be the perfect time for me to walk away. I would know what my worth is and I am not someone who is sitting there fighting for people to come into my life. I know what I offer and people should be fighting to come into my life. My space is sacred. I provide a lot of value. I am an absolutely amazing human being and no one in this world deserves to make me feel that I have to fight for attention and love. It's because you keep fighting, that is why that situation exists. It should be beneath you to fight for someone's basic minimum attention. Because you keep fighting, you keep proving to the world and to yourself that that is what you deserve. The second 3P situation is usually a case where either that person is already involved with someone else and you want them, or they are starting to date someone else and you want them. This is where it requires a deeper analysis of what your actual situation is. Many times people just choose someone who's involved with someone else because they don't want to actually be in a relationship fully. So that desire makes them chase someone who is unavailable right now. I'm not saying that's you might be, or it can be that at this current moment, you are the third party, which is fine. There is nothing wrong with that. But in those moments too, working on my self-concept is the solution because I want things to come to me, not me to go and chase them, right? So again, matters from situation to situation, but these are the most basic ones. The next question, what to do with the guilt that comes with standing up for yourself? So first, you will always feel guilty while standing up for yourself. I still feel guilty standing up for myself because it's completely normal and it's completely understandable. If you are someone who hasn't stood up for themselves before, taking that stand right now is going to make you feel very weird. I will give you an example. A few days back, I was talking to one of my clients and I had to take a firm ground, show him some tough love about the situation that he was in and the choices that he was making were not actually coming very well and he was not taking them perfectly. So I just was very honest with him. At that moment, after the call ended, do you think I did not feel weird and guilty? Of course I did. But I knew that if I did not actually uh, tell him the truth and I wasn't honest with him about the situation, what will happen later is that he will some way shape or form keep doing the same thing and it will eventually lead to bigger and deeper circumstances which will hurt him more which is something i don't want on my consciousness so i will be very open and honest with him that's how the guilt works does that mean i will ne never feel guilty no i definitely will but it means it has to be done and even this client two three days later after our session he came and told me karan thank you for telling me all those things because of which i was able to take a stand for myself Next question. I know I'm obsessed, but I cannot get rid of it. What to do? The reason that when we are obsessed and we are unable to get rid of it can be multiple. But the biggest reason is because there are no instant consequences of being obsessed. So when you are actually obsessed with someone, you don't realize what it is actually doing to you. Just like, for example, if you slap yourself, right, it will hurt once you do it twice, you do it thrice, you will stop because you can feel the pain. But when you're smoking a cigarette, you cannot feel the instant 
hurt that it is giving you right in fact it makes you feel more alive just like stalking someone it gives you that false sense of connection when you are in that situation understanding what the long term consequence of that is is the only way to stop because then you wouldn't feel the need to do that because you would know how it hurts you the next question why do i feel like i am working on myself and if i am working on myself if it will get late to manifest my sp okay i think she means that if i keep working on myself it, it makes me feel that it will delay my manifestations well not fully because this is where people distinguish it so a lot of times because it is taught that way that oh you know working on yourself means that you are actually walking away from that situation that's not true all the times a lot of times it's just you going into a situation where working on yourself will help you more it usually is a very very big attachment towards your identity of holding on to that right holding on to that person holding on to the identity of a chaser and once you work on yourself you know you wouldn't be able to do that but it's very seducing it's very seductive to be a victim right to chase someone because it gives you this false sense of connection with them so the reason that you feel that way is because you are connecting these two things together when they are actually totally different in fact working on yourself is only going to increase your chances of getting what you want so i hope this helps and i hope all of your questions were answered leave uh, any questions like i said in the q and a box on saturday or down here and i will try to answer them all hope you have a good day click the like button if you like the video subscribe and turn the notifications on for more such content comment down your video suggestions and i will see you guys in the next one